I think I'm gonna have to stand here the whole time. I'm in my kitchen, so here's what's going on. I went to work today. I was feeling a little bit better today. I, was, I started to like fight a cold. It was very weird. It never really, I never really got it, but I was feeling really, really run down and tired yesterday. So I took the day off today. I went to work. I worked out, I came in and I made a video. I'll tell you about that in a second. I was cooking and I figured, let me hop on and make a live for you guys because I have a couple things that I wanted to talk about. First, let's wait for you guys to hop on and I'll say hello. Hey Star, hey Sarah. I didn't see who else, who else hopped on. Hey Mrs. 704, hey sweetheart. I hope you got my email. Hey Jessica. Hey Lisa, hey Marie. You guys, I apologize for my appearance. Literally worked out and then put on this little cap to hide my conditioner, dried conditioner into my hair. Usually I do that on Fridays. I put deep conditioner on my hair once a week and I'll leave it in, I'll let it dry in. <gasps> Look at the thumbs up already. I love you guys. Guys, make sure that you thumbs up, you like, you subscribe, so YouTube knows to share my content out with people. I really, really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. But you emailed me a while ago. I know you're busy. I hope you saw it at least, Jessica. Did I see it? Can you, I'm so sorry, can you check your sent box and email it again? Because I don't remember seeing it. If I didn't respond, I think I'm through all of my emails, but <laughs> I could be wrong. It, it takes me forever and a day to respond to emails. Sometimes I'll check them late at night and then I will forget to respond the next day and then they get lost in the bottom because like you said, I do get a ton of emails, so I apologize. Just resend it and tell me you're from YouTube because you guys always get priority, especially my Patreon members. You guys always get top, top priority. Thanks, Lisa. My husband is finally in the halfway house star. Oh my God, that's amazing. Congratulations. I love, love, love that. We just had somebody reach out with her photos. Oh my gosh, my heart is melting. I cried when I saw this. She reached out to me on Instagram. If you guys aren't following us there, it's at Strong Prison Lives. I post a lot of my workouts and a lot of just like daily stuff there when I have when I have time and when I have a chance. I posted tonight's workout on there though. It's on my story. Anyway, she sent me a DM on Instagram and it was, one was a picture of her husband being released after, I believe it was over 18, maybe close to 20, maybe over 20 years. And then the second was a video of her daughter being rekindled with her father after, I think I think it was 18 years. My heart melted, that's on her Instagram. You look darling today, you love my beanie? Thanks a lot. I, I just tried to say thanks love and Ray Ray and it almost came out Lala. Lala, <laughs> what? We rode the bus for three days from Texas to Rhode Island. Oh my gosh, star. Oh, that is, what quality time, right? Yuck on the bus, but you're welcome, sweetie. Hi everyone, that's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of a story and then I wanna answer a question. The story time is kind of, see, I honestly do take my own advice. So here's what happened. Remember earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, I made a video about staying home and not putting yourself at risk if you want to go to visit and the weather is not cooperating or something is just not right. So I had not planned to see Adam for a while. We thought he was going to move. Now we don't know if he's going to move. That's all up in the air. That's who knows what's going to happen with that. We don't know. But I hadn't planned to see him for a while and then I decided, you know what? I have a weekend off, let me come see you. So I sent him an email and I said, hey, if things seem like they're running smoothly because visits have been up and down, he did not want me to come back there. I said, if things seem to be running smoothly, what do you think about a visit this weekend? I really, really miss you. I haven't seen him in a month and a half, maybe longer. So, And I know that's nothing compared to you amazing people who go years without seeing your loved one or even the whole sentence without seeing your loved one. You guys are my heroes. So he was like, I don't know. He said initial, initially I wanted to kind of knee jerk response and say, of course. He said, but just the way things are going here, I don't want to do that to you. I don't want you to have to drive all the way here and not get in or take a day off of work or spend all that money. So just give me a couple days to figure it out. Then they went on lockdown. So I figured it's not happening. No big deal. And then I remembered, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to go out for my sister's birthday this weekend. I can't even go. So Wednesday, Thursday, I, when they got off of lockdown, I can't remember what day that was, later in the week, I emailed my sister, I mean, I texted my sister and I said, 
do you still want to go out for your birthday? I haven't heard anything. Like, what is, what's the deal? And she goes, honestly, bro, she said, I just really don't want to. This is the first set of firsts. The first, my mom died in April. So everyone kind of has been having like a little bit of a struggle on their birthday. It's the first set, like I said, of firsts without my mom there. So she just wasn't feeling it. For two months straight, she's in sales. She just started a new job and she's had weddings and events two months every weekend. She said, I just really just need a weekend to relax. I haven't really been feeling well. Let's not do it. And she's going on vacation. She's going to Italy with her husband in a couple weeks anyway. She said, can we just wait until I get back from Italy? And I was like, of course, it's your birthday. You're not getting off the hook. You're celebrating. We're gonna do something, even if it's low key, because we need to celebrate your life. But I understand you don't wanna do it this weekend. I understand you need a weekend to chill. I get that. Do it before you get sick, especially because you're about to go on vacation. And then we'll do something maybe later in October when she's back and things settle down a little bit. Then I immediately said back to Adam, hey, my plans are off for the weekend. Sorry for the tease. Sorry for like the up and down, but I can come if you want. And then he got off of lockdown. He said, things look good. It's up to you. If you wanna come, come. So in between, they literally went right back on lockdown. So I'm assuming they're not, they're not gonna, like literally his email was lockdown and then he had to go. In between, my car battery dies. I told you guys that about that on the video where I unboxed Adam's property. And they told me that my tires needed to be replaced. And I didn't do it because I wasn't about to pay all that money at the dealership. And I also don't believe that necessarily my tires need to be replaced. A lot of times the dealerships push that because that's where they make the money. So I still need to get them checked. So yesterday he says, he called me, they got off of lockdown after a couple hours. And he said, what do you think about visit tomorrow? And I, he said, I have a concern. And I said, well, I have a few concerns. And he, I said, what's your concern? He said, the weather. He said, I, it's not supposed to be the best weather, but you have the apps. I don't have access to any apps. So you let me know. I said, well, I didn't even take the weather into consideration because it's not the winter. I didn't really look, but it's supposed to be really windy and rainstorms. So I said, well, my concerns are, first of all, my hip and my lower back are really bad right now. I have an old injury that flares up every once in a while. It's as flared. It's the worst it's been ever. So it's been, it's my hip Okay, it's my lower back, it's this whole hip, the glute, the hip goes down my hamstring, behind my knee, into my calf, and sometimes the top of my foot, so figured it was sciatica. So I went to the chiropractor, he worked it out enough that it's out of my leg, and now it's concentrated in my hip and my back. If I sit for too long, it really gets excruciating. So I'd be sitting in the car for six hours on the way there, I'd be sitting at visit for six hours on Saturday, at visit six hours on Sunday, and then on the way home for six hours in the car. That is a long time sitting. I know that that will undo all of the work that I've done with my chiropractor. And also it would, so it would set me back a lot. I would be in excruciating pain, but to be honest, I could suck that up for a visit. On top of that, I was exposed to strep throat. So I thought for a couple days I might have caught strep. I think I've just been run down and I was fighting a little bit of a bug, but yesterday I felt horrible. I will not bring strep into a prison. I will not bring germs like that into a prison. That is so, so, so selfish. If you go and see your loved one with those germs because they don't have access to medical care and strep left untreated without the proper medication can turn into scarlet fever and worse. So I would never, I didn't want to say that over the phone if I was going to decide to get a strep test today and if it was negative, go out there, but I decided against it just because now we have the hip, then we have the not feeling well and potentially bringing germs into visit and being run down already. I lose a lot of sleep when I'm there because I get up early to get ready. And then on top of it, the tires of the car. But on the, but on the side of potentially going to visit, these are my pros and my cons. Those are the cons against going. The pros were my boss wasn't gonna be in the office today, so it was gonna be a quiet day. No, it's not, it's supposed to be twisted. It's, it's actually, I bought it like that. See? Uh, but thank you for saying that. I, I don't know if you're OCD like me, that would have annoyed me too, but it really is supposed to be twisted. So those were the cons of not going. The pros were it would be a quiet day at work, my boss wouldn't be there. It's far enough out from whatever is gonna happen with a transfer or anything like that. It's early enough that snow isn't gonna stop me. I really wanna see him, I haven't seen him in so long. I weighed my options 
and I decided it's just, it would be too much pushing it. He called me at seven o'clock last night. I can't just throw clothes in a bag and go to visit. I have to pack all my food for the weekend. I have to cook what I need. And then I have to pack. Then I have to do the bank, the singles, the gas. So what would have happened was I either would have been up all night last night packing, needed to get rest to feel better, or I would have done all of that this morning, been on the road later than usual, gotten there later than usual, and potentially getting stuck in bad weather, in the dark, because I drive for six hours. It just wasn't worth the risk to me. The reward of seeing him, of course, always seems worth it, but I just wanna let you guys know, the reason I'm telling you this story in such detail is, of course you always wanna see your loved one. Of course you wanna do anything and not really weigh those pros and cons, just neglect all of the potential risks so you can potentially be in their arms. But is it really worth it when next weekend I can't go because I have a baby shower? The following, maybe, the following I have a doctor's appointment that Friday in New York City, so I definitely can't go, I won't be back in time. The following I'm going to Dallas. So there will be a time when I can get there. It might not be for a little while, but life has to go on while they're inside. And if you have to cancel a visit because of your health or because of your safety, please, by all means, I know it sucks. I don't do it often, but when I have to do it, I have to bite the bullet and be a big girl and grown up and mature enough to do it. Again, I just wanted to give you this example because it's real time me living what I explained to you, what I preached to you and tried to teach you a couple of days ago. It's not do as I say, not as I do. I live what I teach you guys. And I wanted to share that with you because it's hard. I could be there, I could be in the hotel waiting to see him tomorrow, but I also could have gotten a blowout, lost control of my car and not seen him. So the point, and, and potentially hurt myself or worse. So you just have to be mature, weigh the pros and the cons, and really step out of your shoes and ask yourself, if this was my daughter, my niece, my best friend, how would I advise her to do it? Because if you say, if it's me, you're going to want to get to him. You will do anything in your power to get to him. And you want to be Bonnie and Clyde and you want to be, I'm holding him down and I'm ride or die and I'm doing everything that I have to do to get to him. But just remember, there will always be another visit for you to reschedule. There will always be another visit for me to reschedule if I keep myself healthy and safe. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to do that really quick. Now I wanna get into a question that I was asked to elaborate and give my opinion on. This woman said that she's in a prison relationship and her brother-in-law told her, if you can stand the test of prison on your relationship, your relationship can survive anything. When he gets out, you're gonna be solid. If you can get through this, girl, you can get through anything. And she said, it's kind of like those people who have gone through on the outside, have gone through some struggle. She said, the way that I see it and what I'm afraid of is people who are together for a really long time and then they get married and it doesn't work out because they're married. She said, so I see both sides of it and I want your opinion. I'd love for you to give your thoughts on it. And the reason I'm doing it on a live video is because I love interaction. I love your thoughts on it in the comments as well. Again, while you guys are here, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. I see 46 people on and only 14 likes. So if you guys can give me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it so, so, so very much. So there we go, there's a couple. So I see both sides of that as well, okay? I want to be a realist. I always try to be optimistic but not Pollyanna, if that makes sense. So the perks where I do agree with that is in a prison relationship, you learn, if you if you work at it, you learn how to, thank you guys for saying that you're liking, that you, okay, let me explain it like this. When you have the physical part of your relationship ripped away from you and you rely on open, honest, no holds barred communication, then you learn how to get to know each other on a deep, meaningful level that most couples will never experience 
50 years into, let's say, a marriage or a relationship on the outside with the physical part of their relationship because it's just a lot of times you neglect all of that deep communication because of the fact that you're, oh gosh, guys, I mean the thumbs up, like the like button below. I love that you guys are giving thumbs up, but also if you can hit the like button, I would appreciate that so much. So the deep, meaningful stuff often gets neglected when the physical is there just because you don't typically go that deep. So when you get all that stripped away from you and there's all kind of confines and restrictions and the only way you can communicate with your loved one is through letters and emails and oh my gosh, phone calls that you live for or six hour, four hour, one hour visits, then you learn how to really, really, really know what makes each other tick or what ticks each other off. You have to talk through all of that. If you allow yourself to do this and you consider this time a blessing and a gift of, <laughs> who says prison, prison is a blessing? No one. Yes, you could see the silver lining where it saves your life. Let's say you're an addict or you're running the streets and being inside has saved your loved one's life, but you can also consider it a blessing finding the silver lining in the crap shoot that it is because you are grasping for the positives, but it's a blessing where you can learn how to communicate on that level. So if you learn that and you learn how to get through all of the struggles of life while you're apart and you learn how to get through all of the crap sandwiches that prison and prison administration and legal throws at you, denied appeals, unforeseen transfers, them getting thrown in the hole, you getting to visit and getting denied for some un, some ridiculous unbeknownst reason, them getting thrown on lockdown and you just not having communication for weeks. The list is endless. Clemency denials, things from the court that come through and you miss the time frame. you name it, it can happen. If you learn how to get through all of those struggles, things on the outside, loved ones getting sick and having to say it to him, drama with who knows what relative and you guys really just learning how to get through that together as a couple right now in spite of the confines in spite of the restrictions and you are it's me and you against the world not me and you against each other i truly think that you are setting yourself up with a foundation that you will survive and you can get through all of the struggles on the outside not saying that it'll always be easy not saying he's going to walk out the door and it's going to be sunshine and roses all the time there of course will be an adjustment there of course will be relearning each other there are core there of course will be the times where you get on each other's nerves my goodness i was just saying to one of my girlfriends today we create as prison wives and family members, mostly as significant others of people inside, I think we learn to grasp that and we find comfort in our isolation, in our independence. We learn to, it's not always easy in the beginning, but I think in a way we learn to find comfort in that and then it becomes a shell. And then the fact that somebody can come in, even though that's what you want more than anything else in this whole entire world is him being home with you. When that threat of your independence and that threat of you isolating and it's me, myself and I, and I take care of myself out here, take care of everything, I'm good, I got it. When that is threatened by him coming home, it freaks you out. Even though it's what you want, your brain is just always fighting. It's human nature, your brain is fighting for stability at all times. It doesn't like to be thrown off course. It just wants to be where it knows what's normal. Even if your normal is the most abnormal thing under the sun, like a prison relationship, it's gonna grasp and it's gonna hold because any threat of change is scary and you don't want it. So it's change after a whole bunch of years of him being gone and you live in the way that you want to live independently. And then him coming home threatens your brain, threatens that abnormal but normal, normal C of your life. 
but that's okay. You just have to reintegrate and learn each other again, and it'll be amazing. So that is, yes, I understand, and I see that if you can get through a prison relationship, my God, you're gonna get through anything. The other side of it, to answer this woman's question, for everybody that's just hopping on now, I was asked, because somebody was told by a family member, if you can get through a prison relationship, you can get through anything. And she wanted my opinion on it. Hi, Heather. Hi, everybody that's hopping on. So my answer to the one side of yes, I agree with that. I just, if you're, if you just hopped on, you're going to have to go and watch out on the replay. My long winded answer on why, yes, I do agree with that. Now, why I potentially could maybe disagree with that, why I see some couples will not fit within that mold is because one, they're not communicating or two, he's one of the people in the relationship is not being sincere during the incarceration. And I do have two videos that I posted a couple weeks ago. They're hugely, hugely, hugely responded to and liked. And you guys are just giving me the best feedback on those two videos, red flags in a prison relationship and green flags in a prison relationship. And if you go search those, if you're new to this or you haven't seen those yet, I go into detail on everything that might stand out to you as a red flag and the person on the inside not having 100% best intentions or not being the person that they might be saying to you that they are specifically, this is for anybody, but especially for people who meet their loved ones while they're already incarcerated. They didn't know them before they were locked up. So it could be that, but also sometimes I think that we learn to identify with our labels. So I go into depth on this topic in my book. It's called The Comeback Code. It's Strong Prison Wives and Families Journal. It's less than $10. It's available on Amazon. It's always linked in the description box below my videos. So I went into depth on this. I gave examples in my own life, in a couple of friends' lives. This came up on Strong Prison Wives on our Facebook page one time and we talked through it. And I used that example in my book to explain this right then. So if you wanna go and get the exercises so you can work through this and figure out if you're suffering from this and how to get past it, really go get the book. It's so affordable and it's so worth it. And that's not a shameless plug because I'm giving you the answer now, but that's the exercise. Those are the exercises among many other exercises that have gotten me through, literally, like I said earlier, I am not do as I say, not as I do. I do everything that I preach to, you, preach to you guys and teach you guys. So that is 10 years of this and exercises that I've used to get through this because I get asked every day, I don't understand how you do this and you are thriving so much. That's how, it's all in that book. It's all about building confidence during this and getting through this with a smile on your face, a real smile on your face, not just faking it. So side note. But when we identify, when we start just only identifying with one specific identity in our lives, such as prison wife, then what happens is when you're no longer a prison wife, you're like, who am I? It's the same thing with the book is called The Comeback Code. It's in, if you go to any other video, it's always in the end screen at the end of the video when those pop-ups come on, or also it's always in the description box below my videos. It just says like Rose Book on Confidence or something like that, but it's available on Amazon and it is called The Comeback Code by Ro Clausen, or maybe it's Roseanne Clausen on there, but if you search Ro Clausen, I think it comes up and it's The Comeback Code. Um, and then there's like, it's a strong prison wives and families members journal or something like that. But if you search the comeback code on Amazon with my name, it'll pop up. Thank you for asking that. If somebody wants to put it, you can get it on, duh, I forgot this, bit.ly backslash comeback code. If somebody could write that in the comments, that would be super helpful. Thanks guys. So if you just identify with that, it's like a mother who only identifies as a mother. That's all she knows is she's a mother. Then her kids grow up and they go away to school or they leave the house and she's like, I don't know who I am anymore. I'm just a mother. I, and now I'm not, and now I'm not mothering anybody anymore and they have an identity crisis or my mother did this. My mother, 
identified with being a grandmother. Once she became a grandmother, that's all she knew how to be. It was amazing. Well, my mom also was one of those people that only knew how to be a mother. And then she had adult children and she didn't know how to treat us like adults. And then she had grandchildren. And then it was like, oh, that's all she knew how to do was to be a grandmother. But your life is so multifaceted. There are so many different areas of your life. So if you just live to be a prison wife, right? And that's just all you do. And that's it. This is your life. That's what you think you were born to do. That's why I was put on this planet to be his wife, to get him through this bid. I got this. I'm a prison wife. I am the best prison wife. I know everything about prison. I know more than any other woman out there. I am the end all be all best prison wife. I am the Bonnie to his Clyde. I got this all day long. What happens when he comes home and all you know how to be is a prison wife? I don't know if you're gonna work out as a couple out here because you lost your identity. You lost your identity and you're done. That's why a lot of times you see women who are in a relationship with somebody on the inside and it doesn't work out, hop right into a different inmate relationship, right into a different prison relationship because it's all they know. It's all they know how to do. It's all they know how to be is a, in a prison relationship. That's their identity. So when you see that, you guys, don't judge people. You don't know what their reasoning is. You don't know why they hopped into that other prison relationship. You don't know them. But that could be one of the many reasons why they did that. It could be. There, it could be because genuinely they just wanted to. It could be because they have a fear, you know, they have a like for the bad boy. It could be the other one didn't work out, but this one did. It could be an insecurity thing. I mean, I've been asked that question a gazillion times. I did a video where, so funny, I just commented on somebody, a different YouTuber, prison YouTuber's channel about this the other day, because she literally just couldn't understand. And I explained, I said, with my experience working with prison wives for over a decade, these are a couple examples that I've seen, but also there, Dr. Phil has a really, really good episode about this and I was asked by my subscribers one time to comment I think it was about this time last year to comment and to make a response video to his video and I did and I think I have like a few thousand views on that video because first of all I don't think that people expected me to agree with him I think they thought as a prison wife I was going to be like come in swinging against him because he was a little bit aloof in some of his messaging, but we all know Dr. Phil, that's his personality. That's what Dr. Phil does. Sometimes he does seemingly speak down to people, but I gotta tell you, I agreed with a lot of the baseline, what was underneath kind of that attitude and that air about him. There was a lot that I said, yeah, I get it. So if you're interested, it's literally like called something like my response video to Dr. Phil. If you just go to my channel and you search videos and you search Dr. Phil, it'll pop right up. And I'd love to know in the comments under that video what you think about that. But the whole point is the reasons I think a prison relationship potentially will not work out. That woman said what my thoughts are on a prison relationship automatically working out. If you could get through this, you can get through anything. Partly, yes, I think that, but that's my reason why maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe you're just so different. If you knew each other before, maybe you just grew apart. That's why I developed Strong Prison Wives and Families. That's why I preach it all day long. That's why in my little elevator pitch, I say, if you stick with me and use the tools and exercises that I provide to you, they will get out, they will stay out, and hopefully you will live happily ever after. What I mean by that is you can't just set goals and run off in one direction and him stand still and be so ready to hit the street right where he left off 20 years later two years later even because you're going to grow and he's stagnant and then you're on two totally separate pages my thought is it will be wonderful or even vice versa he grows in there he takes all the programs he's doing what he needs to do to rehabilitate himself because the lord knows there's not much rehabilitation being offered on the inside if any by staff and administration most of it is self taught, self done, self reflection, self motivation by the inmates in there helping one another or themselves. So let's say he does all that and you're out here still using drugs. You're out here still partying, dancing on tabletops every night. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. But what I'm saying is 
you're gonna be on two totally different pages when he comes home and often negative influences outweigh positive influences. So that's not a good mixture. But if you're on two different pages, it's not gonna work out when he gets home or someone's gonna pull each other down. Because again, negative influences usually outweigh positive influences, sadly, because it's just so much easier to go with the grain and do what everybody else is doing than to button it up and go against the grain and have to live above everybody else, right? So I am like going off. Joe Tommaso, hey, I wanna get you on my channel to promote your all your new adventures. I sent you an email about that before. So if I see potential in people and I love you and I like you a lot and you're my friends, you guys are my heart, then I'm going to reach out to you guys. Just like the woman in the woman's story who I posted about today, she didn't come to me about being in my channel and you're more than welcome to do that. But I saw something in her story. You guys asked for it. So I'm saying that because a lot of people are like, we don't believe her story or not a lot, a few. Why would she tell me lies when I came to her and said, can you share your story with me? She would just say no. I don't know. Anyway, lost in a tangent. But so I'm saying all that. Those are the reasons why potentially, yes, getting through this is hard. And yes, if you can get through certain struggles, you can get through other struggles. But if you don't learn each other well enough, if you set out together and you just didn't take the time to really learn each other's needs, if you just give up when things get tough, because it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a different kind of tough, but it's gonna be tough if you just can't open up. If he hits the street, if you didn't make goals, oh, let's go back to that. So I think my advice to you guys, and again, I go into this in much more detail in the comeback code, my book, again, forgot to tell you guys earlier, bit.ly backslash comeback code. That's just an easy link to get to buy, to purchase it. It's less than $10. But if you need to set, I think, to help thrive during this time, individual goals, what you want to obtain while they're gone, and also couple goals. And you need to start preparing for his release, no matter how far away it is, from the day he walks in that door. My friends, Sean Hopwood, Justin Paperni, and Michael Santos, very familiar names, I'm sure, to you guys if you're involved in the prison community, celebrities within this prison community, very, very dear friends of mine. I do a lot of work with them. They always say to their clients, to the people that they help out, they have a sheet this long of successful clients. What they say, first and foremost, is you need to prepare for release from the day you walk into prison. That's how you're successful. And if your loved one's been there a while and you haven't, you still have time, of course. It's not like, oh, he hasn't prepared for two years, so we're not gonna be successful. Might as well just throw in the towel now. No, it's not like that. But the point is, you gotta plan this. You gotta have goals. Adam and I, Adam's a lifer. He does not have an out date anytime in the next 200 years, not kidding. Not, well, are we under, yeah. He got 213 years and he's been down for almost 20. So in like 190 plus years, we don't have an out date. 2185 is his out date on paper. <laughs> this is me being a little bit sarcastic and maybe bitter, sorry. But the point is we still prepare for his release every day because the day that that's overturned and we're rewarded that release, we'll be ready to go. He will never go back there. He will fight for it. So there was my really long winded, way of saying I see both sides of the coin it just depends on the couple it depends how hard you want to fight for it it depends on how open you are with one another it depends on how you utilize this time are you just going to chill is he just going to chill or is she just going to chill in there watch reality tv which is huge in there and so he watches basketball wives and keeping up with the kardashians and plays poker all day long where's that going to get him or you're out here going to clubs hanging out with other dudes, doing your thing. Not that there is anything wrong with that, but you're not doing anything to thrive and fuel your relationship, nurture your relationship as a couple, then I don't see very 100% value in the fact that, or I don't have 100% faith in the fact that he's gonna get out, she's gonna get out, and you guys are just gonna hit the ground running and sail off into the sunset together just because you made it through prison. 
Do you see? But if you work at this, just like any other relationship and you communicate and you fight for this and you deal with the tough stuff together and you don't just throw in the towel and you talk through everything and you let him know when something doesn't feel right, when you're emotional, when you just don't want to do something, when you do want to do something, when he's not living up to a standard, when you're not living up to a standard and he lets you know, tough love is also love, you guys. Those are the times, those are the relationships that I think will thrive. You set goals, you reach goals, you encourage each other, you empower each other to go for what you wanna go for. Yes, I believe if you can get through the crap shoot of prison relationship life, all of those struggles and you've nurtured all of that and you've checked all those boxes, sure. Okay, let's get to comments because I was just off on a tangent as always. You have the best advice, Ro. Oh, thank you. I'm going to get two copies of your book and someone my husband. Oh, you're the sweetest. Can you give a shout out to my insurance agency in Texas? As Merle's, of course, what's it called? Oh God, I just dropped my phone. Sorry guys. <laughs> it's not a live stream till Ro drops her phone. We're in love again, Ray Ray. I'm so happy you're in love. Words cannot say how much love and acceptance comes through from you and your YouTube videos. Oh my gosh, Isabel, thank you. At times, aside from God, you're the pillar in my life, even though we've never met. Oh my God, that's gonna make me cry. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm so honored to be that pillar for you. Hey, hey, happy Friday. Live streams are my favorite. I should have gotten my tripod, lazy me. I'm redoing my cabinets and watching all of your videos. Thank you for keeping me company and distracted. LL, you are so welcome. I am happy to be there with you, having a party, redoing cabinets. I love it. Just saying hi, love your channel. Tammy, I love you, sweetie, thank you. Hi, Kelly. Your tank top strap, I got it. Sorry I'm late, great decision, Ro. Take care of you, thanks, Jody. I was just talking about this with a friend about going to visit sick with a virus. Medical care is already bad enough, let alone exposing an entire prison in a closed little limited environment. Sarah, thank you. I have a video that I made last year, probably around this time too, when all the germs are hovering and I'm run down where I was supposed to go to visit and I went to go get a strap test and I vlogged the whole thing and I talked about that and Adam calls them super germs because germs aren't taken care of in there and they're passed around and they're allowed to grow. They literally get these crazy super germs where they're so hard to get rid of. So you and I might just present with a cold. They're going to get something out of control because they don't get seen. Like they're just told, go back to your cell and wait it out. And the flu is crazy in there and strep and staff, it's disgusting. So don't be selfish, you guys. I had a woman one time I was walking in to visit. We were all in line going in to visit and she was hacking, hacking, coughing into my hair. And I was so grossed out by it. Prison kind of turned me into a germaphobe. And I think I might have to do a future video about that just cause it, it, I think it'll kind of be comical, but also it's like disturbing. Sorry, I have to come get a drink of water. Um, yeah, okay. Chrissy, you made a live, yay! Are you an overpacker? I used to be very bad. Are you asking me as a joke? Because let me talk to you about overpacking. Adam tells me that, <laughs> I think I have videos where I showed you what I packed to go to visit for two days. I have a huge bag just of makeup and hair accessories, Jersey girls to the fullest. I have a carry-on luggage with clothes and shoes and some toiletries. I have a whole bag, huge, enormous bag, cooler size bag with food. Then usually I have one with electronics and my clothes, my clothes you guys that are hanging are hanging in the car. So that's not even the suitcase with the shoes. God forbid when we have boot season cause there are heels on those knee high boots. It's insane. Overpacking is my middle name. One of my first videos on here, it's probably so cringy, but it's called what's in a prison wife's suitcase. It's so crazy. I remember I had Glade in there and one of my friends was like, Glade? And I'm like, it's not for the bathroom, you moron. I stay there by myself. It's to make my clothes smell good. This was like before Febreze or maybe in between Febreze. I found the scent that I liked. I don't know. Because hotel rooms smell musty and dingy and you got to smell good for your guy. Hi, Tabitha. Those pretty hearts. Thank you for the likes. Oh my gosh, we're up to 40. Yay. This is so true. Love it. Facts. Thanks, Kayla. Hi, Tiffany. 
This is so spot on, Ro. Thanks, Star. Hi, Tomasetta. Me and my husband always say, if we can get through this, we can get through anything, and it will only make us stronger as a team. We and love each other more. I love that. The struggles make you stronger as a couple. Yes, Joe. Going through that now, he's going through where he feels like a nuisance and feeling lost. Oh my gosh. He's only been out for a couple hours though, so I'm sure that's just part of it. You guys will be okay. The first four days my man was put in prison, he started talking about hope to other inmates. I believe it was a blessing to those guys to hear that at the time. Rebecca, that is so sweet. Oh my gosh. I think a lot of us on the inside also get wrapped up in our own stuff and take for granted our significant other. Yeah. Can everybody give a thumbs up for that? Um, struggling as well. I will be the first to say, yes, I got myself together, but okay. And let's say this too. Adam is so sweet and he's so respectful, but he even gets into this too. This little, he, you know, I don't want to say trap, but I think I had a guy on the inside explain this to me once I've told this story 110 times, but I'll tell you guys again. Cause I do have a lot of new subscribers. Adam one time was like being a little over the top and I emailed a friend that this was before I was very young. It was very early on and I, I'll get there. I emailed a friend who was inside a mutual friend and I was like, he's driving me nuts. Da, da, da. His first piece of advice or why are you telling me and not him? That's like a round of applause for that. He's right. Somebody just posted one of our ad and I think Kara just posted on our, our Instagram. The person you should talk about your relationship issues with is the person you're in a relationship with. So I botched up that quote, but he, the guy was right. But he also gave me really good advice that has stuck with me for all these years. He said, we are inside here. We live in a bubble. We forget that you have to get in a car and drive somewhere. You have to sit in traffic. You have to shop for the food, cook the food, well, prepare the food, cook the food, eat the food, clean up after the food, take care of kids. Everything we need is within a mile radius of us. We don't do our own laundry. We don't cook our own food. We don't clean our own X, Y, and Z. When we go to work, we wake up, we walk across the compound and we're there. If we don't wanna go, we don't go. I mean, within, you know, means and them getting in trouble, etc. But he said, so a lot of times we just forget and you need to remind him. Adam and I got into like a little bit of a tiff one time because just because I have Google in my pocket doesn't mean I can stop dropping Google anytime you need me to come up with something and it's gonna be there. Like I, he tells me, oh, women are just so, this was years ago before I talked through this with him. Women can find anything on Google. You guys are like stalkers. Not always, not always. And he's talking about like people and contact information. I can't get you the information for some leader of the DOJ because they don't put their information on Google because they don't want people like you, 1.1 million prisoners contacting them and their family members contacting them. So you just have to reset expectations with your loved one. That's my long winded way to say, I agree with Joe on that. Okay, let's not make the phone wall. My wife did an amazing job holding down the fort and raising the kids, that's amazing. Hola, prison wife. Hola, kingdom. Preach it, sister. That's why inmates teach classes in federal. I learned a lot from these guys. That's awesome. Is there a workbook for the book and where would I order it? So the workbook, you don't need right now. It's in, we're in the process of finishing up the workbook. We wanted the book out because it had been three years. I wrote the book. It was with an editor who that didn't work out. And then it was with a second editor and then it was with a third editor. So I wrote that book in 2015 or 16, 2016. And it was at the point where I was like, all right, this book is like, needs to be put out into the world because I'm doing a disservice to people by not sharing this information that's been on paper for years. So we got the first iteration of the book done. I'm like, all right, what about the workbook? And my second editor had her, is an author. She had her editor come in on this and do this, like out of the kindness of her heart. She's like, my editor will kill me if I go back and ask her to separate this. So the point is you can get the book and you can do the exercises on paper. The workbook slash journal will be a little bit more easy to follow. It'll be a little bit easier to use. It's going to be really cheap, but in the meantime, you could do it without it. The five people you surround yourself with the most, you become like, amen to that. I agree. I wanted to say thank you so much for sharing your story and others because as a clinician, it provides a lot of insight and can help me help clients. 
Bree, thank you for that. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that so much. And of course, I'm an open book. You have the best advice, Ro. I'm going to get two copies of your book. I saw that one already. Thanks, Lauren. Oh, I need the name of the insurance agency that you want me to shout out. My thoughts and so true. Love the channel. Thanks, Bullets. Happy I found you. I was such a bad place thinking me and my husband couldn't make it and you have made it. And you've made so many points hit hard and made sense. Okay, good. I'm glad I could help. I have two outpatient surgeries. Things I have to do. Oh, a list. Good thing I'm tough. Yeah, and you just have to tell him, like, I need to know what's a priority. Like, I, I joke when I say stop, drop, and Google, but the only, one and only thing I will stop, drop, and Google for is anything legal. If it could help him with his case coming home, everything else goes on the back burner, especially sweetheart, when it comes to your health. You have surgeries coming up, you gotta take care of you. Because if you're not healed and in a good place, who's gonna be there for the family? Who's gonna be there to take care of him if you're sick and you can't? So he just has to learn that instant gratification is what our, got our loved ones or most of them into the predicament that they're in right now. So you have to teach them. Like I had a woman who told me one time, hold on. Let's see if I can get that to stay. Hopefully it doesn't fall. And if it does, I apologize. I'm going to be like, ah, make a big scene about it. But I had a woman who came to me one time and she's like, he asks me for so much. I don't have time. I'm going to hire somebody to Google for me. And I was like, girl, girl, sit down. We're going to have a little chat. Okay. We're going to do this thing called tough love. I'm going to be your big sister. Okay. You do not ever need to hire somebody to Google things for your incarcerated husband. No, absolutely not. Put down the phone, step away, take a breath. Think about what you just said. Think about what you just said. If he's sending you that much information to Google, he needs to slow his role. Like I said before, instant gratification is what got him in this predicament, most likely in the first place. So you need to teach him patience. You need to learn the art of kindly saying the word no. Have him prioritize what he needs or you prioritize what he needs, you do things on your own terms and on your own time. And we had a woman who, cause we all joke about this in the prison wife community, right? It's hysterical, the things that they ask for. The most hilarious one that I've ever heard of, and she would not do it. She, we made a big joke out of this. If you've heard something funny, let us know in the comments. But her husband asked her to stop everything and Google species of chickens. I am not kidding you, species of chickens. Not what came first, the chicken or the egg, which is still funny, species of chickens. She's like, you think I have all day? Do you think I have all day around my full-time job, our kids, the mortgage that I'm keeping up, the three jobs that I have to keep around my full-time job to put money on your books and keep food in our children's mouth to Google species of chickens? You've done lost your mind. Get back in touch with me when you find it. Freaking hysterical. That is not the same woman who was gonna hire somebody to Google for her husband. She was just a very new prison wife. She was frazzled. She didn't know how to do this. I'm sitting here joking, you guys. A lot of it is like, not. I'm not making stuff up. I'm making light of it because I can right now because I, none of you are in that position. But I am telling you with all the love in my heart, you do not need to drop everything in Google. Again, the only thing I stop, drop, and Google for for my husband is if something legal could happen that could help him get his life sentence overturned. But throughout the years, I have conditioned him and he knows now to tell me, I need this as soon as you can, or listen, you could do this when you get time. And then I say, you need this as soon as I can. How serious is this? That's why you have to have kind of a bit of a knowledge of their case, like I explained to you in the red flag and the green flag videos. Okay. Oh, you're gonna watch my video about Dr. Phil after this? I'd love you to keep, leave a comment on that video and let me know what you think. MRSA all the time, yeah, ugh, I heard that about MRSA on the inside. My prison pen pal has been in lockdown. I sent her some crossword puzzles to help pass the time. Any other things you would suggest to male inmates in the hole or the shoe? Yes, so workouts are great, magazines are great, our, um, 
CFO, COO Lasan is also gifted. She loves to create stationery, so she does that. She has so many really cute ones available on our Patreon page, which is patreon.com backslash SPWF. There's tons of stationery available there. We're actually in the process of putting together a whole bunch of, a few for each season, just like different fun, cute stationery that you can write your letters on. Obviously, you can print them off in black and white or color. For the feds, you're going to need to do them in black and white. And I don't know what states. You need to know what the rules are within your state if you need to print them off in black and white or color. Some facilities do not accept anything in color. Anywhere in the feds, they don't. But um, we're in the process of doing a few for each season, and that'll be available on our website once it's fully functioning. But we're not working on any of that until after the Prisoner Family Conference in mid-October because all of our time and resources are going to that right now because it's a big event for us. It's our meetup. We work very closely with the Prisoner Family Conference. We love, love, love Carolyn, who's from there. If you guys, you, there's still tickets available. I'll be doing a keynote. Lasanne will be doing a keynote. Um, Nicole Richardson will be reading her poetry. I believe she might be doing a keynote too. There's a big concert at the end of the night. She'll be singing. It's going to be amazing. We love it there. It's in Dallas, middle of October. I feel like a commercial all the time, but I'm just saying this because it's our big meetup. Everybody always asks for a meetup. That's our annual one. Then we'll probably eventually add another one in a different area of the country. But um, it's prisonerfamilyconference.org if you want to look at all the details, where to stay, where it is. If you can make it, that's cool. Okay. I'm also a huge germaphobe, I swear. I'm For me personally, prison made me a germaphobe. I need that beanie. Where did I get this? I don't know where I got this. I'm gonna, Maybe forever 21 years ago. I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna tell you, but I bet you they have it on Amazon, something similar. It looks really funky right now because my hair's in a braid with conditioner. I used to take bleach. Where did you take bleach? Love your channel, bless you. Thanks Rhonda, I love you. Your husband is, you and your husband is a strong couple. Aw, oh, thanks, Pamela. Love your channel. I have no loved ones in prison, but I'm close to becoming a probation officer in England. Chelsea, that's awesome. And can wait to support individuals settle into life on the outside. Your insight is amazing. Chelsea, I have to say thank you, and I love that you're here getting this knowledge before that because there are so many correctional officers and probation officers who come right out of college. I've seen this happen a lot because a lot of the college kids used to go in and do an inside out class with the prison. And then after they graduated, because there's a huge criminal justice program, they would turn into CEOs and go there. And they start out, I saw this one girl, she was very sweet, very meek, tiny, innocent, very sweet when she started. All of a sudden within a year, I mean, you have to have tough skin, right? So that's, um, she had to toughen up a little bit, but she went, all the way the opposite direction down the rabbit hole started getting corrupt it was like this huge turnaround so i love that you're seeing both sides of it and that you're using it to help keep your heart open i actually have a video coming next week that i did with a woman who is in law school she works for a prosecutor and watching my channel and other prison channels changed the trajectory of her life and how she wants to practice law. And it just was so mind boggling to me that I reached out to her and asked her if she wanted to do a video with me because oh, you guys need to see this. Like, it's amazing. I love it. I love that I can use my experience to help influence people in their career path even, or their lives, or their relationships. It just means the world to me. I love you guys so much. You're so cute in your little hat. Thank you. You're making me feel better. You're absolutely the greatest role model in this prison wide world. Love you, Marie. Thank you, sweetheart. I need that hat. I, if I find something similar on Amazon, you guys, I will post a link on the community tab. Cassie's forever having you Google. <laughs> you give me so much courage. Thank you, girl. Hugs. Oh, Kat, I'm so happy to hear that. Ours is only legal related. So he's having you Google tons of legal stuff. Where is your ring? Like my ring as far as being married? I don't wear a ring. Is that what you're asking? I'm not married, by the way. I just say wife. We're not legally married. Do you have any suggestions for resources that you found most helpful that I might share with clients to share besides all your wonderful projects? So, Brie, I hope I'm saying your name right. Can you email me strongprisonwives at gmail.com? Um, we have Strong Prison Wives, the website. We have... Uh, 
all of my YouTube videos, tons of them. And then I work with a few organizations that I could probably share. I just need a little bit more detail of what you're wanting to share with your clients and then we can go from there. So email me and we'll chat further. In their defense, they have nothing but time and I think they tend to forget that we don't always have the same time they do. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. There are things you think are important for clinicians to know that you haven't covered in your videos. Yeah, and you know what? I wanna introduce you to my very dear friend who is a clinician and also is a prison mom and she runs an organization out of Washington, D.C. where she helps um, prison family members, she helps women. She works right now with a women's facility but she works out of a halfway house. I think that she is. Go you guys are gonna get along and she'll be able to help you so, I would love to help you in any way that I can and I will, but she's gonna help you in so much more of a way because she has both sides of it. She's lived both sides. She's been a prison mother and she's a clinician and she also works with this genre community of people every day of her life. So I'll introduce you, just email me. I have three under five and can't find sitters for the conference. So that sucks, I'm sorry, but they also, kids are allowed this year. First year that they're having kids at the conference. I don't know if that helps you. I'm going to use that line, you've lost your mind, get in touch with me when you found it. Do we need a t-shirt? Sometimes things that come out of my mouth, I love when people say them back to me because I forget I just said it in a, like a haste of the word vomit. Let me just check my battery. You know how this goes. Okay, we're on red. We're gonna die. Um, wish you had some Canadian resources. We have a lot of subscribers here in Canada. You guys that are from Canada, comment after this video and you guys can all hopefully get in touch with each other. G-Man is another YouTuber friend of mine. If you follow his channel, I have a video with him here. He was a cop. He was in the military in, Can he's in Canada, and he is uh, very, very knowledgeable on PTSD. He probably has a lot of resources because he was a cop for so many years, but he's also very pro-inmate. He's so supportive of me and all the other prison YouTubers, so you might want to check him out and hit him up. Great, great, great guy. Tell him you're one of Rose's friends. I sent you over there. It's G-Man. If you just search G-Man, it's like G-Man and numbers, but um, you can find my video with him. His channel is linked, or if you just search that on YouTube, uh, you'll see him. Uh, Anyway, okay, I love you guys. I gotta get going because if my phone dies before I end this video, we're gonna be in trouble. It does not end the video and then you're just gonna be stuck on here and it's just gonna go and go and go. So you guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. Oh, by the way, so am I. I keep forgetting to add that. You're one day closer, me too. <laughs> Lots of love from my heart to yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. If you guys have any comments, requests, questions for topics or anything you want me to answer on a video, let me know. You could either email me, strongprisonwives at gmail.com. You can throw it in the comments and I will be happy to make the videos that you guys want to see. I love you. Bye guys.